the list of flight stations we will be covering in this video. St. George Reef Lighthouse was built on a small rock only 300 feet in diameter is one of the most exposed lighthouses on the Pacific coast. Extreme difficulties were encountered in constructing this tower and 10 years was required before the work was completed. The base of the tower is on solid block of concrete and granite and the tower above is also built of granite blocks. The stone was quarried from a granite boulders found in the Mad River near Humboldt Bay. In 1892, after a cost of $752,000, the light went into service. It marks the site of the tragic sinking of the steamer Brother Jonathan. There were ever-present hazards to be encountered in the manning of St. George Reef Lighthouse. Located on a storm-lashed northwest seal rock, a boom lifted supplies and personnel to the lighthouse. The focal point of the light was 144 feet above the sea level. It is located approximately 12 miles northwest of Crescent City Harbor and was manned by a crew of six. A 1 million candle lamp, a marker radio beacon, and two-tone diaphone fog signal was her armament against the disasters to shipping. St. George Light was displayed from one hour before sunset to one hour after sunrise. Trinidad Head is a low square brick building painted white and was built in 1871. The light is only 20 feet above ground, but the headland on which it stands gives it an elevation of 196 feet above the sea. Despite the great height above the sea, heavy seas have been known to reach it. Table Bluff Lighthouse was built in 1892. A fixed fourth order Fresno lens was removed from the Humboldt Harbor Light and installed in the 35 foot tower at Table Bluff. The fixed Fresno lens was replaced by a revolving one. A modern optic was installed in the tower and the Fresno lens was shipped to San Diego to be displayed in the old Point Loma light. The lighthouse was deactivated in 1975. The Humboldt Harbor Light located on the north spit of Humboldt Bay Bar entrance had for many years been criticized as being too low. In 1892 the lighthouse service constructed a light station on Table Bluff, a promontory south of Humboldt Bay but within view of the bay. In 1906 the Navy established a radio station on the property. During World War II the station was expanded to include lodging for mounted beach patrols a coastal lookout post, and a radio compass station. Humboldt Bay is reached through a narrow gap between two long sand splits and the founding of Eureka, California in 1850 on the shores of the bay led to the provision of a lighthouse for the bay in the first set of lights of eight west coast lights. The design was essentially that of the original Point Loma light, a central tower with a one and a half story house erected around it. A fourth order Fresno lens was provided and the light was first exhibited in December 1856. The protracted construction made this the last of the original eight lights to be completed. The light was situated in a sandy area towards the tip of the northern split. The intent for the light to serve both as a marker for the entrance and, and as a warning for the spit. It was immediately discovered that the low-lying site was vulnerable to waves and by 1867 the lighthouse board was already making plans to relocate the light to an area to a new site on the south side of the entrance. In the meantime a log breakwater was placed around the light. Fog was a major problem and a steam fog whistle was installed in 1874. The move was delayed for some decades and in an interim the light experienced numerous injuries from the elements. It was damaged by earthquakes in 1877 and 1882, subsequently leading to a substantial bracing and reinforcement. High water in 1885 caused such severe damage that the house was deemed unfit for occupancy and a temporary shelter was built to house the keeper until a replacement could be built. 
The appropriation for the Table Bluff Light finally came in 1891, and on October of the following year, the lens of Humboldt Harbor Light was moved to the new lighthouse. The lighthouse was officially closed on October 31, 1892, and the buildings were used by the U.S. Corps of Army Engineers as a field office. After many ships, including the SS Northerner and the Lighthouse Standard, were lost to the jagged rocks surrounding the 326-foot sea stack Sugarloaf and Blunt's Reef offshore of Cape Mendocino, the lighthouse, with attendant buildings including a carpenter shop, oil house, barn, and two-story residence, were built on 171 acres of remote rangeland. On December 1, 1868, the light began sending a signal of one white flash every 30 seconds. The United States Coast Guard took control of Cape Mendocino Lighthouse in 1939 when the Coast Guard and the U.S. Lighthouse Service merged. The lighthouse was a 43-foot iron tower, 16-sided and double-balconied, a twin to the lighthouse at Point Reyes, but for the roof shape. At 422 feet, the height of the light exceeded the 420 feet of Makapu Point Light, making it the highest focal plane of any lighthouse in the United States. The lens has been shipped through Eureka, California, and then overland to a remote location, as it was too risky to ship it directly to the lighthouse. Also to the remote location, lighthouse tenders service the facility. In 1881, three men being sent to the lighthouse were killed while attempting to land a small boat from the tender Manzanita. New dwellings were built in 1908 for the keepers. At least 10 keepers served the lighthouse in 1869 to 1926. Punta Gorda Lighthouse was built in 1911 and was first lit in 1912. After World War II, it was decided that, that given the remoteness of the station, it was too costly to maintain. A lighted buoy was placed offshore. The fourth order Fresno lens was removed and the station was boarded up and deactivated in 1951. The keeper's house and all other station buildings were demolished. In 1873, Point Cabrillo was surveyed as a potential site for a lighthouse. However, no lighthouse was built at that time. By 1904, several shipwrecks later, the U.S. Lighthouse Service recommended that a lighthouse be placed at the point. The bill to fund its construction was passed in June 1906, and the government bought 30 acres of land on Point Caprio from rancher David Gordon for $3,195. The lighthouse was constructed beginning in 1908 and began operation in 1909. Its first keeper was Wilhelm Baumgartner, who held the position until 1923. In 1935, an air diaphone, super diaphone sound signal was installed. The United States Coast Guard took over the lighthouse service in 1939 and manned the station until 1973. The lighthouse at Point Arena was constructed in 1870. The brick and mortar tower included ornate iron balcony supports and a large keeper's residence with enough space to house several families. In April 1906, a devastating earthquake struck the light station. The keeper's residence and lighthouse were damaged so severely they had to be demolished. The lighthouse service contracted to build a new lighthouse on the site and specified that it had be able to withstand any future earthquakes. The new lighthouse began operation in 1908, nearly 18 months after the quake. It stands 115 feet tall and featured a first order Fresnel lens over six feet in diameter and weighing more than six tons. The lens was made up of 666 hand ground glass prisms and focused toward three sets of double bullseyes. It was these bullseyes that gave the Point Arena Lighthouse its unique light signature of two flashes every six seconds. This incredible optic was built in France. 
Prior to the introduction of electricity, the lens was rotated by a clockwork mechanism. The keepers, or wickies as they were called, had to crank up a 160 pound weight up the center of the shaft of the lighthouse every 75 minutes to keep the lens turning. Light was produced by Funk's hydraulic oil lamp that needed to be refueled every four hours and whose wicks had to be trimmed regularly. Later, two 1000 watt electric lamps were installed to replace the oil lamp. An electric motor was installed to replace the clockworks. A lighthouse was assigned to Point Reyes in 1855, but construction was delayed for 15 years because of a dispute between the U.S. Lighthouse Board and the landowners over a fair price for the land. The lighthouse is 16-sided, 37-foot tower and a twin of Cape Mendocino light. The first order Fresno lens was first lit on December 1, 1870. Electricity came to the lighthouse in 1938, and a concrete step was built into the cliff in 1939. The station was automated in 1975. It was a family station with a complement of four men who maintained the first order light, a fog signal and a radio beacon. The light tower itself is 16-sided structure forged from iron plate bolted into solid rock. The top of the lantern is 37 feet above the ground and a focal plane of the light is 294 feet above sea level. Buildings maintained on the property in addition to the family quarters were the fog signal building, engine room, pump house, paint locker, double garage, and four car carport with adjoining office and workshop. Farallon Island Light was constructed on southeast Farallon Island. The extremely sharp slopes of the island and the jagged nature of the rocks were serious obstacles to construction work. The bricks used for the tower were carried up the rocks in bundles of four and five on the backs of men. After the tower was complete, it proved too small to house the first order of Fresno lens and the tower had to be torn down and rebuilt. The lighthouse was lit for the first time in December 1855. In 1939, the United States Coast Guard took over the lighthouse. The Coast Guard maintained a presence until 1972. By that time, the lantern room and the Fresno lens had been removed and an automated arrow beacon was placed on the tower. The lens is on display in the San Francisco Maritime National Historic Park Visitor Center on Hyde Street while the lantern room itself was scrapped after removal. The original Point Bonita Lighthouse, a 56-foot brick tower, was located too high. Unlike the east coast of the United States, the west coast has dense, high fog, which leaves lower elevations clear. The original light was 306 feet above sea level so the second order Fresno lens was often cloaked in fog and could not be seen from the sea. In 1877 the lighthouse was moved to its current location at 124 feet above sea level. The United States Coast Guard currently maintains the light and fog signal. Up until 1940 the lighthouse could be reached without a bridge but erosion caused the trail leading to the lighthouse to crumble into the sea. A wooden walkway was installed, but when that became too treacherous, the suspension bridge was built in 1954. Point Bonita Light Station had the first fog signal on the west coast. It was an Army surplus 24-pounder siege gun. This light is the only one in America that can be reached by crossing a suspension bridge. In 1877, the lighthouse was moved so its current location because of original location was often too obscured by fog for the light to be visible from the bay. This location required the builders to overcome many challenges, including the need to for a hand-carved 118-foot long hard rock tunnel. More than 300 boats ran aground near the Golden Gate during the gold rush years. One shipwreck, the SS City of Rio de Janeiro, was just a few hundred feet offshore from the light. Point Montera Lighthouse was established in February 
1875. It originally had a kerosene lantern that was upgraded in 1912 to a fourth order Fresnel lens. The tower was erected in 1881 in Wellfleet, Massachusetts as the Mayo Beach Lighthouse. In 1925, the cast iron tower was discontinued at Mayo Beach and was disassembled and it was moved and rebuilt as Point Montero Light Station in 1928, where it stands today. The lens was transferred to San Mateo Historical Society when the lighthouse was automated in 1970 and currently on display at the library at the College of Notre Dame, Belmont, California. Light from a fixed third order Fresnel lens was first shown from Alcatraz Lighthouse on June 1, 1854, with Michael Casson receiving an annual salary of $1,100 as keeper, and John Sloan being paid $700 to serve as his assistant. The original lens had been in use for just under 50 years when in 1902 it was removed and replaced by a revolving two-panel fourth-order Fresnel lens, which produced a white flash every 15 seconds. The district officer recommended the change in the light's characteristics so that could be readily distinguished from the electric lights of the surrounding. In addition to the light, the keepers on Alcatraz were also responsible for a fog bell, struck by machinery, which was placed on the southeast tip of the island. In 1883, the old bell and other material were sent to the Navy Yard at Mare Island and a 30,340 pound bell was cast for Alcatraz Island. The new bell was placed in that new structure and when conditions merited, it was struck five blows at intervals of 10 seconds following a pause of 25 seconds. Pigeon Point Lighthouse is one of the most picturesque lighthouses on the Pacific Coast. The tower stands on a rocky promontory and has long been a landmark for ships approaching San Francisco Bay from the south. The headland, and hence the lighthouse, took its name from the ship Carrier Pigeon that wrecked here in 1853. The lantern room of the tower is no longer equipped with the original first order 1000 watt Fresnel lens that had 24 flash panels, was composed of 1008 hand polished lenses and prisms, and was capable of producing over 500,000 candle power illumination. It was manufactured in Paris, France, and was first lit at Pigeon Points at sunset November 15, 1872. Originally, the tower was equipped with a lamp that burned refined lard oil. In 1888, that lamp was replaced with a kerosene lamp. To produce pigeon points assigned characteristics of one white flash of every 10 seconds, the one-ton lens rotated one time every four minutes. When observed from a distance, this resulted in the appearance of one white flash of light every 10 seconds. In 1926, the lighthouse was provided with electricity. Modern innovations were incorporated and the kerosene lamp was replaced by a 1000 watt bulb. The clock works by an electric motor and an electrically operated fog signal was, was eventually installed. In 1972, the Coast Guard mounted a 24 inch aero beacon on the front of the tower and officially retired the Fresnel lens from duty. After surveying the coast north of Monterey for the U.S. Coast Survey, A.M. Harrison made the following recommendation for a light on Ano Nuevo in an 1855 report. Point Ano Nuevo possesses all the requisites for a site for a guide to Santa Cruz Harbor and would prove of advantage to vessels in the coasting trade. Before an appropriation for the first order light on Ano Nuevo was made in 1868, three vessels were lost. The government finally purchased Ano Nuevo Island and land on Pigeon Point for $10,000. The lighthouse board decided to place a first order lens on Pigeon Point and erect a fog signal station on Ano Nuevo Island. The first blast of the island's 12-inch steam whistle was emitted on May 29, 1872, with John Kenny as the first head keeper. 
A duplicate steam whistle was added to the station in 1880 and on January 1st, 1881, the characteristic of the fog signal was changed from 15 second blast each minute to a 10 second blast followed by 55 seconds of silence. The fog signal was in operation roughly 700 hours a year and consumed about 40 tons of coal. On February 12, 1890, the island's first light, a lens lantern, was mounted on a post on the seaward side of the fog signal and was placed in operation to improve the station's effectiveness. Point Pino's light is a third-order Fresno lens with lenses, prisms, and mechanisms manufactured in France in 1853. Construction began in 1853, but difficulties with delivery of the lenses and prism from France delayed the opening of the lighthouse till 1855. A larger second-order light had been planned, but delay in shipment caused the present light, originally destined for Fort Point Lighthouse in San Francisco, to be installed instead. The first light source was a whale oil lantern set inside the lens, whose tank the keeper had to climb the tower to fill several times a night. Whale oil was very expensive and was soon replaced by liquefied lard oil, which gave way to kerosene in 1880. At the turn of the century, an incandescent vapor lamp was used, followed by electric lights in 1919. From 1912 to 1940, falling weight mechanism rotated the shutter around the light, causing the beam to be cut off seaward for about 10 seconds every 30 seconds. Thereafter, time flasher provided the on-off characteristics. Point Sur was a hazard for ships from the first settlement of California, and especially after the great increase in shipping in the mid-19th century after the California Gold Rush. Many ships were wrecked there. In 1886, Congress appropriated $50,000 for construction of a lighthouse at Point Sur, and another $50,000 in 1887. Twenty-five men were employed in the construction of the lighthouse and adjacent buildings. They built a road from the mainland to the rock, blasted a trail to the top of the rock, quarried stone, and built a tramway from the shore to the peak. By the end of the first year, all the rock had been quarried and construction of many of the buildings was well underway. The Lighthouse Board hoped the construction would be completed by the end of 1888, but an additional $10,000 was needed before the light station was completed and a lantern lit August 1st, 1889. The first order Fresno lens at Piedras Blancas was first illuminated on February 15, 1875. The Piedras Blancas lighthouse was originally 100 feet high to the top of the ventilator ball, but earthquakes damaged the structure over the years. On December 31, 1948, final damage from an earthquake centered six miles off the point led to the decision to remove the upper three floors, the fourth landing, watch room, and lantern. Missing the ornate upper floors, the truncated lighthouse now stands about 70 feet. The lens was moved and is on display in nearby community of Cambodia. A sound signal was added in 1906. In 1975, the light was automated, sound signal removed, and the station was unmanned. The need for a lighthouse at Point San Luis was recognized in early 1867. In the 1870s, Port Harford was quite busy, averaging 400 ships per year arriving at that location, and the need for a lighthouse was again discovered. In 1886, Congress finally passed the funding authorization for the lighthouse. The construction of the lighthouse was delayed, and it took the near disaster of a ship sinking to move the project ahead. On the night of April 29, 1888, a ship called the Queen of the Pacific began to take on water. It was about 2 a.m. and the ship was 15 miles from Port Harford. The captain turned the ship to the harbor, but had to proceed slowly because of the dark and the fear of rocks at the harbor entrance. The ship made it to within 500 feet of the pier, where it settled to the bottom in 22 feet of water. This provided the final impetus 
for the creation of the lighthouse. The lighthouse was completed in June 1890 and was lit for the first time on June 30th, 1890. By specification, the fourth order Fresnel lens would generate alternate red and white flashes of light every 30 seconds that would be visible 17 nautical miles out to sea. In 1969, the Fresnel lens was retired and is on display in the City County Library in San Luis Obispo. It was replaced by an authorized electric light. In 1974, the Coast Guard decommissioned the light station. The point was named Punta de la Olimpia Concepcion by Sebastian Vincano in 1602, who was the next Spanish sailor to venture the Pacific waters along the California coast after Juan Cabrillo. In 1835, experience of the sailing ship Pilgrim, which was damaged and nearly capsized in a sudden change of weather here, that led to the need of a lighthouse. It was here at Point Conception in 1856 that the lighthouse was built high on the sandstone cliffs above the location of the present lighthouse. The first order Frenzel lens and steel tower for the lighthouse were made in France at a cost of $65,068 and was transported around Cape Horn. A report indicates that the lighthouse was severely damaged during the Port Tejon earthquake in January 9, 1857. The lighthouse was moved in 1881 because the fog would less be likely to obscure the light and was rebuilt from the top of the bluff to a mesa halfway down, 133 feet above the Pacific Ocean. The light station was automated by the U.S. Coast Guard in 1973. Point Wainami Light is a 48 foot high 1940 Art Deco style tower on a fog signal building on the Santa Barbara Channel at Port of Wainami. The original lighthouse was completed in 1874 at Point Wainami after the construction of a 900 foot long wharf in 1872. When a storm destroyed the wharf in 1938, Ankhsard Harbor District was formed and finished the construction of Point Wainami in 1940. The extant lighthouse structure was completed in 1941. The fourth order frontal lens was used in both the original and current lighthouse towers until 2013. In November of 2012, Ventura County Cultural Heritage Board voted to preserve the 1899 lens by retiring it from active service, so it can be displayed on a lower floor of the lighthouse and more easily viewed by the public. Positioned at the eastern entrance to Santa Barbara Channel, Anacapa was a natural choice for a lighthouse. The Lighthouse Board decided to place a light on the island, but to limit the expense of a building, an offshore beacon, and unmanned acetylene lens lantern on a tower was erected in 1912. In 1932, the current permanent light station was built on the island, and was the last major light station to be built on the west coast. The 39-foot tower and fog signal were built on the highest point of the island. The United States Coast Guard automated the station in 1966. In 1980, Congress designated five of the eight Channel Islands, Anacapa, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa, San Miguel, Santa Barbara Islands, and 125,000 submerged islands as Channel Islands National Park. The lighthouse is still an active aid to navigation. The lighthouse was built in 1874 with lumber from the California Redwoods and designed by Paul J. Peltz, who also designed Point Berman's sister stations, East Brother Island Light in Richmond, California, Mare Island Light in California, Point Wainami Light in California, Herford Inlet Light in North Wildwood, New Jersey, and Point Adams Light in Washington State, all in essentially the same style. The original fourth order Fresnel lens was removed in 1942. The lighthouse was saved from demolition in 1972 and refurbished in 1974 and a new lantern room and gallery were built by local preservationists. In 1972 the light was added to the National Register of Historic Places. In 1941 the light was extinguished due to the bombing of Pearl Harbor. 
there was a fear that the light would serve as a beacon for enemy planes and ships. Long Beach Harbor Light looks different from a traditional lighthouse. Labeled the Robot Light when established in 1949, it is completely automated and was the forerunner of the new version of the 20th century lighthouses on America's west coast. The 42 foot high white rectangular tower with a columnar base features a 36 inch airway type beacon and is controlled by ANRAC from the Los Angeles Harbor Light. The three-story facility of monolithic design is built on concrete supported on six cement columns cast into six pockets of a crib. It had dual tone fog signals and a radio beacon. Point Vincente Lighthouse was built in 1926 on the Palos Verde Peninsula. The light source was dimmed during World War II to avoid aiding the enemy. The original third order lens still revolved in the lantern room. In 2015, the Coast Guard announced its intention to install an LED light with a 14 nanometer range, replacing the current light and lens. The white cylindrical tower is 67 feet tall, and the masonry structure was built on the edge of a 130 foot cliff. This place is the center of the lantern, 185 feet above the ocean. And because of this elevation, the 1.1 million candle power beam has a nominal clear weather visible range of 24 nautical miles. The Coast Guard light list specifies the light characteristics as being a pair of two white flashes repeating every 20 seconds. The most striking feature of this lighthouse is the classical third order rotating Fresnel lens located in the lantern. This particular lens was manufactured in around 1910 in Paris, France. The lighthouse also incorporates a pleasant sounding foghorn to audibly warn ships during times of low visibility which are common in this area. The lighthouse was manned until 1971 when it was automated by remote electronic aids to navigation monitoring system. The original plan for the lighthouse was a wooden square two-story building like those constructed for Oakland Harbor and Southampton Shoals. However, the plans were changed and the Los Angeles light was firmly anchored to a concrete block and built of steel and reinforced concrete. It is the only lighthouse ever built to this design. The original paint on the lighthouse was only white, which caused a problem with seeing the lighthouse building during fog. Vertical black stripes were added to, for increased visibility. Though battered by seasonal storms and occasional passing ships, Los Angeles Harbor has faithfully guarded the port's busy gateway since 1913. As early as 1907, plans were being made to include a lighthouse in the Los Angeles Breakwater Project. The light was to occupy a 40-foot square concrete block at the end of the West Breakwater. A temporary light was established on the block with the completion of the Breakwater in 1910. The present lighthouse was completed in 1913 at a cost of under $36,000. Heavy construction proved to be a godsend when a furious five-day storm assaulted the light a few years after opening. The steel and concrete stood fast as the angry seas broke against the walls. The light did not escape unscathed. When the storm had ended, the keepers complained difficulty walking one direction of the building. A plumb line was dropped and the tower revealed that the concrete block had settled during the storm, giving the lighthouse a pronounced shoreward list. The old deep-throated two-toned foghorn, affectionately known to locals as Moan and Maggie, was replaced by a higher-pitched single-tone horn in 1959. The new horn was called Blading Betty and was disliked by local mariners for years. The saddest change of Los Angeles Harbor Light came in February 1973 when the station was automated and the keepers departed. A site for Point Lomas Light was chosen in 1851 near the summit of Point Lomas. Construction was begun in April 1854. 
A lantern and lens had been ordered from Paris and arrived in August 1855. The lighthouse was completed in October 1855 and was lighted for the first time sunset November 15, 1855. It was designated light number 355. When the lighthouse was constructed, an additional small structure was built next to it. The building was originally used as a storehouse for oil, wood, and other supplies. However, in 1875, part of it was converted to a two-room apartment for the assistant lighthouse keeper. Today, the building has been changed once again and it now serves as a museum. It holds the original lens of the new Light Loma Lighthouse as well as maps and other information about Point Loma and its history. While in operation, the lighthouse had the highest elevation of any lighthouse in the United States. However, the location on top of the 400-foot cliff meant the fog and low clouds often obscured the light from view of ships. On foggy nights, the lighthouse keeper would sometimes discharge a shotgun to warn ships away. On March 23, 1891, the flame was permanently extinguished and the light was replaced by the new Point Loma Lighthouse at a lower elevation. New Point Lomas was first lighted on March 23, 1891, replacing the old Point Lomas Lighthouse, which is atop the 400-foot cliffs of Point Lomas. The old lighthouse was often obscured by fog. The new light is only 88 feet above the water. The first lighthouse keeper was Robert Decatur, Israel, who had been keeper at the old lighthouse for 18 years. The original light was 600,000 candle power and could be seen at a distance of approximately 15 nautical miles. There was also a two-tone diaphone foghorn and living quarters for several families. The light was automated in 1973. In February 2013, the light had been in use since 1999 and was replaced with a VLB-44. The LED apparatus reduces the maintenance and cost of the lighthouse and is brighter than the previous light. The structure is only one of a kind remaining on the west coast. It is very similar to Coney Island Light, Plum Island Range Rear Light, La Pointe Light and Duluth South Breakwater Inner Light all of which were built about the same time. The latter three of these are all on the National Register of Historic Places.